Hey, welcome. Thank you for coming to listen to the Lichen Sclerosis podcast. My name is Kathy, and this is our journal of learning about and living with lichen sclerosis. I have LS, and each week I either research or talk to someone about an aspect of LS and bring you the information so you don't have to go searching. I bring you the real talk without the medical jargon. And today's episode is going to be real frank talk. You might get upset with me. You might be like, this bitch done lost her damn mind. And you know what? I might have. But you might just need to hear this. What I want to talk about today is gratitude. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I work overnights. I literally was sleeping and woke up and said, this is your message. This is what you need to talk about on your last episode of season one, gratitude. Now, most of my episodes are researched, outlined, thoroughly curated for you because I'm not trying to come out here with no bullshit. I really care about the information that I bring you. I want it to be accurate. I want it to be helpful and I want it to be true. But this week, I'm going to come from the heart. So if that ain't for you, go ahead and shut it off. If you celebrated Thanksgiving, I hope you had an amazing day. And I will catch you on February 5th. But if you're ready for some real talk and you're ready to get down with me, keep listening. Now, here's where I might just lose you. There's a shitload of women right now with fear, anxiousness, all kinds of negative emotions and feelings because of lichen sclerosis. And I get it. I get it. You don't know what you don't know. The horror stories that you read here and there, they get your mind racing. No freaking doubt. But I want to give you a different way of looking at this. I want to give, I want to flip the coin from fear and anxiety to acceptance and gratitude and see if it doesn't make you just a little bit happier. See if it doesn't start changing your perspective and giving you back a little bit of that pre LS life. Okay. Because we all know that LS is going to be here for the rest of our days. So we're going to have to start getting to know this bitch. We're going to have to start getting along with this bitch. Because we can't fight every day of our lives. We're going to have to get on some friendly terms. And one of the first steps to doing that is instead of looking at her with fear and anxiety, look at her with gratitude and acceptance. Okay, bitch, you here to stay. I see you. I see you. And we're going to do this together because we ain't got no damn choice. I wish you hadn't come to my house. But you here. <laughs> you ain't going over. There, there's no way I can evict you. So let's, let's see how we're going to live together. Let's see what we got to do. What we got to do so that you ain't all up in my shit causing me all kinds of drama. And I can take care of you so that I barely see your ass. So let's try that. Let's talk about gratitude. Now that she's here and you know she ain't going nowhere. And you're feeling scared about what she's about to do to your future. You're anxious about what you're going to see when you look between your legs. You're anxious about what she's about to do to your relationship. Sex. You've already felt the, the itching and the burning and the tearing. And you're anxious that every time... You're about to get down and get freaky. You're going to be in pain. I get that. But what if, what if we flip that? What if instead of being anxious about the pain, we look at what we're grateful for that doesn't cause us pain? So removing some of that fear, like I talked about in my last episode about masturbating, using dilators, getting to know what hurts and what doesn't hurt. Go work through that fear because a lot of it is stopping us and we can have sex. Listen, 
Before I really knew what LS was, I didn't have pain with sex. I had a little sting, which now I know how to take care of. I wasn't using lube. I wasn't moisturizing. I wasn't doing any of that stuff. But now I know if I use lubrication, if I moisturize, that's going to minimize me having any pain. So if I look at it realistically, in a scale of one to a hundred, I had pain. It was like maybe 10%, maybe. And it wasn't all the time. But if I use that lube, that moisturizer, that's going to wipe away that 10%. And guess what? Then I'm not going to have no pain. So think about it in your life. When you were having the pain during sex, did you know about LS to the extent that you know now? Were you using medication properly? Were you using lubrication? Were you moisturizing and keeping your skin supple and elastic Were you doing all of those things? Quantify the pain. In a scale of 1 to 100, what percentage was that pain? Of that whole experience of what felt good and, and the pain. Do you think moisturizing and, and using lube and not no little KY jelly lube get you some good lube? We're going to be talking about that in season two. So make sure you subscribe so that you get notified of the episodes when we come back. Because we're going to be talking about pelvic floor therapies. We're going to be talking about lubes, moisturizers, barrier creams. I got a whole slew of episodes ready to be coming at you when we come back in February. So make sure you are subscribed. But if you do use a good lube, whether it's coconut oil or aloe based or that new CBD lube that I've been hearing about, if you use those things, Is it going to take away that pain so you can have sex? Listen, we be having some good sex and we be happy. Ain't nobody got time to be anxious and scared when you happy. When things are good, they're going to change your mindset and the way you look at these negative things. LS is fucking negative. I'm not even trying to say it's not. What I'm trying to tell you is We got to change the way we look at her. We got to be grateful. Look at your situation. Could it be worse? The answer is yes, because it could always be worse. Always. There's always somebody out there who has it worse than you. The only ones who doesn't have it worse, they're dead. So if you're not dead, you have something to be grateful for. Be grateful you're not dead. I told you there's going to be some real talk. You might not want to come back, but I'm not going to bullshit you. The only way that we're going to move forward is we have to change our mindset. We cannot live in fear. We cannot live in negativity. We have to change our mindset. Now, literally, I grind for you. I work 48, sometimes 60. I've worked 71 hours in a week and I still research, bring you an episode, going through my own shit, going through my own relationship. I have my own family that I take care of. I have to get some sleep somewhere in there. It ain't much, but I still get some. And I come to you every week and I'm grateful for it. And I've lost half of my labia minora and my clitoris is is fused over. And I'm still grateful because I changed my mindset. Let's talk about the fear of getting cancer. It is absolute real, absolute real. But I don't want that fear to turn into anxiety that is going to cripple you. Let's look at it realistically. There is a one to 5% chance that you are going to get cancer from their lichen sclerosis. That means there is 95 plus chance that you're not. 
Let me tell you something. The fact that you're here listening to my voice just ups that 95%. Because unfortunately, the people who do get cancer, a lot of them is because they've been misdiagnosed or undiagnosed for so long that their disease has progressed into cancer. Or they're not taking care of themselves properly because either they don't know or they choose to do something different. That is a life choice. But the fact that you are here, you're learning, you're listening, you've already up that 95%. If you're using your medication properly, if you are taking care of yourself properly, if you're asking the right questions, if you're seeking the information, if you're going to the doctors regularly, the chances of you getting cancer are slim, So why are you focusing on that little one to 5%? Focus on that 95 plus, okay? Be grateful for the fact that you know, because some ladies unfortunately didn't know and they went years not knowing while this disease wrecked havoc on their bodies. But you do, be grateful for that. Be thankful for that. Concentrate on that. You got this. So leave that fear, leave that anxiety. You know what you got to do. Use your medication. Monitor yourself. Keep your doctor's appointments. Be an advocate for yourself. Know what you're supposed to be looking for. Be calm in the knowledge that you know how to take care of yourself. And you will take care of yourself. You're going to do what you have to do. So switch your mindset. Find the gratitude. Find where you can be grateful. Step back and look at the reality of what LS is. Women with LS still have children. They still have vaginal births. Women with LS still have healthy relationships. Women with LS are still active. There's this amazing lady who, she's a bodybuilder. She has this amazing physique. And she works out and she has LS. Now, I'm sure if she's in a flare, she has to modify, but she don't let it stop her. And you don't have to let it stop you either. You might have to get off the bike for a little while or indefinitely, but you can find something else that you enjoy. Be grateful that you can still do those other things. Yes, you got to give up bike riding or Whatever other activity causes you to flare that you've had to give up for now. Mind you, I said for now, because there can be a day when you're in remission and you're feeling good and you can go back to that. This is just today. You have the future. Be grateful for that. Be thankful that you have an opportunity because there's a lot of women who don't find those pockets of gratitude. Change the way you're thinking and work through those fears and anxieties. List them out. Take a piece of paper. Write them down. This is what I'm afraid of. I'm not going to be able to have children. It's going to ruin my relationship. I'm not going to have sex, be able to have sex anymore. Sex is going to be painful. I'm not going to be able to do this exercise anymore. My life is ruined. Write them out, whatever your anxiety is, whatever your fear is, write it down on paper. And then next to that, I want you to write down what percentage of that fear is true. In the scope of what you got going on, what percentage of that is true? Like the pain in sex. What percentage is pain and what percentage is pleasure? What can you do to minimize that pain? Are you doing everything you can to minimize that pain? And if you're doing everything that you know, then talk to somebody who might know something more, whether that be a support group, a doctor, a friend, doing some research, find some alternatives. I've talked to ladies who've gone as far as they, they've gotten laser treatments and it's rejuvenated their sex lives. There's options. Do not give up because There are options. The fear of getting cancer. I'm afraid I'm going to get cancer. Okay. Realistically, the chances of you getting cancer are one to 5%. 
You're focused on that tiny blip out of 100. Focus on that big chunk, that 95%. And then know that that percentage goes up because you're listening to me, because you're using your medication, because you're going to the doctor, because you're monitoring yourself. Focus on that positive. Flip your thinking on all of your fears. Find what you can to be grateful for on each one. I'm grateful that there's 95 plus percent chance that I'm not going to get cancer because I know what the fuck I'm dealing with now because I know that I need to go to the doctor because I know how to take care of myself. So I'm fucking grateful for that. Absolutely. I'm grateful for the fact that I know that there's lube, there's medications, that there's things that I can do for me to have sex. And if those things that I can do don't work, that there's things out there that I don't know. Find the side to be grateful for and focus on that. I want to say thank you. Thank you for pressing play the first time, whether it be today or months ago. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around this long. Thank you for coming back and letting me speak to you and trusting me enough to say, you know what? I believe she knows what the hell she's talking about. So I'm going to trust her. Thank you for trusting me. That's huge. And I appreciate that responsibility. I don't take it lightly. And I hope that comes through in my work. I know that I'm reaching women and I know that I'm touching women because I get the emails, I get the DMs every single day. And I thank you for reaching out to me because I know how hard that is. (laughs) I had this one podcast that, man, they touch my soul. It's a marriage podcast. It's my absolute favorite podcast. It's called The Black Millennial Marriage. Originally, my husband and I were going to do a marriage podcast and that fell through. But as I was researching, I just wanted to listen to other podcast from minority couples and I came across their podcast and I fell in love. I binged them. I felt them. They were talking to me. They were going through similar situations. They were so perceptive and I wanted to reach out so many episodes. I was like, oh my God, I got to let them know. And episode after episode, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I don't know. I was just like, you know, they could be busy. What if they don't even read my email? And then it got to like episode, I don't know, it was in the 80s. So mind you, I've been listening to these people for weeks wanting to reach out. And they had this this number where you could leave a voicemail. So I called and I I was fluttering over my words and I, I just couldn't express everything that I wanted to say about how they were touching me and talking to me and how I felt like they were me. And I screwed the voicemail up. And so I called back. And I called back like four times because I just could not get it right. So in the end, I said, fuck it. I'm just going to send them an email. So I sit and I'm writing this email. I'm writing this email. Listen, listen, this email was long. I put the email away. I was at work, of course, because I ain't got time for shit else. But I had to go off a break, went did some work, came back and finished the email. That's how long that damn email was. But then I hit send and I waited. I was excited and nervous at the same time because I felt like I knew them and I wanted I wanted to talk to them. I wanted them to talk to me. And a day went by, I didn't get no email. Another day went by, I didn't get no email. And I started feeling like, damn, okay, okay. You know, these people are, are, are busy, you know. I can tell you the truth. My heart got crushed just a little bit. Then day four came and I saw the email. I got a return email. Can I tell you, I felt like a giddy little girl again. The joy of getting that return email. I'd never really been like a fangirl. Like I never was like excited about 
an actor or a singer or anything like that. But when I saw that email, I literally was like, <laughs> because they read my email and they sent it, they sent one back. And I was so grateful. I was so grateful to these people for just taking the time to send send something back. I hadn't even opened it. I didn't know what the fuck it said. It could have been like, fuck you, don't ever reach out again. But I was excited. And I opened the email and, you know, they apologized for the delay. And they talked to me. And I was happy. So my whole point in this story is to let you know that I get it. I get how hard it is sometimes to send that email, to send that DM, because you don't know what I'm thinking on the other side. I just want to let you know that I'm thinking that it's super important that I get back to you. I'm thinking that no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to answer your DM. I'm going to answer your email. Literally, I'm answering DMs and emails all of my breaks. As soon as I wake up, I'm checking to see if anybody's messaged me because I don't want you to wait those one, two, three, four days. So if you need to speak to somebody, if you just need to ask me a question, get some information, hell, just let me know, hey, I listened to your voice today and this is what you said. And that was complete bullshit. And this is it. I don't care. Talk to me. Don't be afraid. I'm just human, just like you. And I want to hear from you. And I'm grateful for every email, for every DM. I'm grateful. And if you want to talk to me in person, sign up at lichensclerosispodcast.com slash connect. And we can talk. You, me, a bunch of other ladies with lichen sclerosis. Let's talk about LS. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about everything, relationships, whatever is on your mind. Let's talk about it. The next meetup is going to be on December 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So get on it. Even if you can't make this one, we're going to have one in January, February, March. I ain't going nowhere. I got you. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for being here and listening. I truly, truly appreciate you. Now, as the holidays come, as we kiss 2020 goodbye and 2021 hello, I want to wish you a happy holiday. However you celebrate, go into the new year with a renewed spirit and a grateful heart and a positive attitude because (laughs) you a bad bitch. You got this. LS is not going to take you down, okay? Because you got way too much to live for. And you going to be that sexual being. You going to be that bad bitch. You going to have that attitude. You know why? Because you are all women and we stand up and we show out. And you going to keep doing that. And if you've made it this long into this episode... I really, truly do appreciate you because you my ride or die. And I want you to go right now and either look me up on Instagram at Lichen Sclerosis Podcast or shoot me an email, Kathy with a K at Lichen Sclerosis Podcast.com and let me know you my ride or die, bad bitch. I can count on you. You got my back and I got yours. And if you haven't, go to com slash connect and sign up for the virtual meetup so I can see your ass. Okay, so we can talk. I want to talk to you. So once again, have an amazing holiday. I hope you really hear the message Because I love you and I want you to be happy. I want you to live life to the fullest. You are too young to be letting this disease drag you down into the gutter of misery. And just, ugh, I don't even want to talk about it no more. 
I just got to get up and go to work in a minute. But I just had to come and leave you with this message because I truly, truly do believe it. And I want you to believe it too. Have an amazing two months before I come back into your earbuds or wherever it is that you listen to me. And I hope you have a renewed spirit because when I come back, I'm telling you, I'm coming back with more information that is going to just make you the best that you are. So I will talk to you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive. And I love you. Bye.